And now, what's my line? Brought to you by Stop at Spray Deodorant. Poof, there goes perspiration. Poof Deodorant Body Powder, the body powder you spray. The Nest Shampoo, the new flowing cream shampoo. All in the first truly functional cosmetic containers, far easier to use. All created by Dr. Jules Montagnier, the famous cosmetic chemist. Time now to enjoy What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers Coast to Coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. amusing young gentleman whose fabulous new record called Bebop's Fables is amusing disc jockeys and people from coast to coast, <laughs> Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you, David. Thank, you. Thank you very much. And on my left, one of the lovely ladies of radio and television who is now busy these days rehearsing for her soon to open Broadway play, Late Love, Miss Arlene Francis. My left, pinch hitting for our dear Bennett Surf, is a gentleman who spins platters and news and sports with equal and remarkable facility, dear Ted Husing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arlene. And on my left is that eminent youngster of letters, J.C.D., John Charles Daly. <laughs> Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Once again tonight, some nice people have come to spend some of their weekend with us and brought with them some very interesting occupations. Occupations which um, we're reasonably sure the panel's going to have some trouble with, so our guests will win some prizes. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later on, but right now it's time to get going. Time for the experts to meet our first challenger whose job they've got to spot. So would you sign in, please, ma'am? Dolores, Dolores Crelo, is that right? <laughs> Miss Crelo, is That's it? That's right. Miss Crelo, mm -hmm. would you tell us where you're from? I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> Actually, I know Cleveland pretty well. I went out there and did the air races for about three years in a row. Well, I know the Statler and the Airfield know very well. But uh, there's some people over here would, uh, would like to know you a bit better. So would you walk down in front of the panel, please? That's nice walking. <laughs> Just hold on for a minute, Harry. Yeah. All right. Miss <laughs> hey, Crillo, would you come over here and sit down now, please? And as I think you probably know, we always give the panel at this point one free guess on the basis of uh, a very brief acquaintanceship, to be sure. But we always begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. Well, I think she models something. She models something. Mr. Allen. I think she's a private eye. <laughs> Miss Francis. I think she models mink coats. I hope for her. <laughs> Mr. Husing. I think she's a graphologist in a typewriter company. Well said. Oh, is that so? Well, great. <laughs> I wanted to get in there quick. Much. No, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have a further look, lucky viewers, at Miss Crelo, and at the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. But, uh, Ms. Crelo, the panel's got to work, and uh, if you make them work hard enough, we'll be flipping cards here very rapidly, and every time we flip a card, they lose $5, and we keep the record this way. Ten of these flips, and uh, they have lost the game. All right, Ms. Crelo is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with, um, Steve Allen. Oh, all right. <laughs> is there a product of any kind connected with what you do? Yes, there is. Might this product, for any reason whatsoever, be described as a pleasant product? Oh, yes. Is it uh, within the realm of possibility that I could ever have come into contact with this? Uh... <laughs> uh, yes, there is a possibility. If I were to use this product right now, or if I were using it, could you notice it? <laughs> yes. Is it perhaps then something that might be worn? Yes. Uh, would I attract any undue attention if I were to wear this on the subway? <laughs> yes, you would. And for some mysterious reason, that possibility is amusing. 
Could this be worn at the beach? Yes. And that's not amusing. <laughs> now we're getting someplace. Uh, when John and I, let's say, were young children, might we ever have jumped into the old swimming hole without one of these on? <laughs> Um, yes, you might have. Yeah. <laughs> and Mr. Allen, if you don't mind, don't implicate me in any further crime. <laughs> well, this wasn't a real old swimming hall. It was just, you know, not too long ago. Uh, in the Miss America contests, uh, do young ladies sometimes parade around in just one of these things? Uh... <laughs> no. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Is it possible that this is uh, not precisely apparel? Uh, it is possible. Uh, is it, uh, and uh, is it, did you say it was useful? Did Steve ask you that? No, I don't believe that specific question was asked. Well, may I ask it? <laughs> is it useful? <laughs> is it useful? Yes. Well, yes, it's been put to use. <laughs> <clears throat> Could you buy it in a department store? Yes. Uh, is it anything that would be uh, worn above the shoulders? Yes. Would it be worn in the realm of the head? Yes. Uh, is it, uh, would it be worn from the nose up? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, the wrong so. place. <laughs> Two down to make the go, Mr. Hughes. Well, now, I'm, uh, rather a novitiate here, so I'll ask, is it worn around the ears? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's the funniest picture we've had painted verbally for some time. Thank Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it possible that Steve might never have worn one of these in or out of the swimming hole? <laughs> Miss Creelo wants a conference. I'm very sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can make it a short conference, John. Not so. They're quite serious about it. He's getting her telephone number. <laughs> Would you uh, ask the question again, Miss Kilgallen? Well, I don't remember the precise wording, but it was something like, could Steve have gotten along up to now without ever having worn one of these? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Allen. And this is something that is quite normal for a man to wear, if not... <laughs> if not usual. Quite normal for a man to wear, if not usual, makes it five down and five to go, Miss Francis. It is not normal for him to wear it, but he could not have survived this many years unless he had worn it. Is that what you're saying? I don't like the tenor of this whole thing here. We're getting a little bit ambivalent. Actually, the reference was specifically to Steve Allen. And oh, to the Steve question Allen. Was could he have gotten along this far without ever having worn it? And, and in said, his case, we said no and flipped the car. He could not have gotten along without ever having worn it. Now, that is it, isn't it? That's what you've said, isn't it? He mm. could not have gotten along... In his case. In his case. Yes. The same thing would not be true of Ted Husing. Or you mean it's just... Well, actually, I can't give you any more information than the oh, information which I gave you. <laughs> <laughs> However, you said you could buy it in a store. That's for sure. And it can be seen by the naked eye. If it is worn, it can be seen. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Is it something that uh, you say, it, it, well, it must go from the nose down to the chin then, something that goes in that area? Is it something that goes in the center of the face between the nose as, 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 rather than being extended out to the ears? <laughs> How does that look like? <laughs> yes. Could it be a beard? <laughs> no. Steve hasn't got a beard. Is it made of a soft material? Mm, I would say softish, yes. <laughs> Do After ladies many wear years these, of experimentation, I might add. What? You said that ladies wear these too. Yes. Yes. Do ladies use them more than men use them? Yes. Is it in any way an aid to beauty? Yes. Well, of course, if it's a chin strap or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> You want to ask the question? Is it anything that holds something up that has a tendency to fall down? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's six down and four to go. I'm going to give, give you 30 seconds more, Mr. Husing. Well, I trust this isn't for the uh, development of the nose. Uh, no, a mask for the nose. Yes, it is not for the development of the nose, <laughs> yes, no. Yes, it is not. Uh, 
If it is a mask of any particular sort, is it uh, for beauty? Ex um, I you said the question what? is, if it is a mask of any particular sort, is it for beauty? Yes. Since your basic premise is in error, we will have to flip a card. <laughs> Seven Thank down you. and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it some type of makeup that's applied? Yes. Is it something Steve might use for television? And it's put on in the area of the mouth? Yes. Well, is it lipstick? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, more than that, I remembered Steve had been in a Broadway play, and I believe just an ordinary part of stage makeup is wearing lipstick, True. even for well, the men. If any, uh, if any of the boys at the pool room are watching, I don't wear it. <laughs> 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 well, now you have found the product, which is lipstick, so I have to give you a little time longer to see if you can find out what uh, Miss Crelo's relationship to the lipstick is. Does she test it? That would be no. fun. Not testing. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Allen. She sells it? No. no. Nine down and one to go, Miss Francis. Does she put the point on it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry. Ten down and then more to go. She demonstrates it. Oh, oh real? Yes. <laughs> How soon? <laughs> Steve is I, ready. I stand up and demonstrate Hazel Bishop. Oh, oh no, smear lipstick. <laughs> All right, Miss Quilo, you have won the full prize, and I must say it's been wonderful Thank to have you. so much fun I with her. A product great. and uh, also with an occupation. Thanks for being our guest on What's My Life. Let's see what you can do with another challenger. Uh, would you be good enough to sign in, please, sir? You did very well, panel, with the last one, and um, all we need from you now is the same kind of performance with perhaps some suspicion of more speed, and we have George A. Connor, Jr. How do you do, Mr. Uh, where are you from, sir? Carl Gables, Florida. Carl Gables, Florida. Came up here to enjoy the sublime and temperate climate of New York, I dare say. Would you then take a walk down and let the panel meet you, please? Shake hands, Mr. Connor. Welcome. <laughs> All right, Mr. Connor, would you come over here now? Come over here and join me. And uh, at this point, we let the panel have that usual free guess, and we always begin with Miss Kilgallen. I think he's an alligator trainer. An alligator trainer, Mr. Allen. I think he's a racetrack employee. Miss Francis. I think he has a camp for, you know, building up boys. Mr. Husey. I think he's been brought up here to find out why for the New York Giants. Yeah. Now, a very interesting answer, but not absolutely correct. So uh, we will let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Connor. And at the same time, we will tell them what his line is. Well, Mr. Connor, uh, the panel has to find out Specifically what it is you do, and I think you understand the rules. Every no answer, five dollars, we flip the cards, ten knows you've won the game. All right, Mr. Connor is salaried. With that, we will begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. But you said that there was an interesting answer someplace along the panel. Let's stay with the racetrack, maybe. Do you have anything to do around horses, Mr. Connor? No. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, I am sorry. <laughs> And if he's anywhere near a racetrack, track, he's around a horse. So think of that five before you turn it over. What do you think I was doing? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I will say this, that um, that is a qualified no. We'll leave it as a no because of the specific phraseology. I only meant it in the vicinity of horses, sweetie. You only I meant have called you sweetie. You might have to give in. <laughs> All right. With Mr. Carter's permission, may we accept the explanation that she meant it in relation to horses in general rather than being around them specifically? All right, Miss Francis, you I'm have the charm. Uh, <coughs> go on I'm there. I'm in the diplomatic service. Now, uh, do you work at a track? Yes. Uh, do you work in the vicinity of the cellars? Yes. The who? Do you... The cellars, dear. They're little men behind cages. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you let them lie, the cellars? <laughs> Two dollar sign right there. <laughs> uh, do you uh, have anything to do with selling tickets at the racetrack? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a racetrack ticket seller? Yes, but you've got to, you know what, what is it actually? I what? can't think of the word. 
I'm reformed. Could we you have a conference? It. Yes, may we have a conference? 20 seconds for a conference. He's a parimutuel man? Is that what it is? I think that's what you have to With a very substantial platform laid down by Mr. Allen and a very fine assist by Miss Frances, Mr. Connor, I'm afraid we didn't give him as much trouble as we'd like to have. But I tell you what, I can't think of anybody coming this way from Florida, all this way from Florida, not having any prize at all, so we'll just flip some cards. Flip. What do we got? <laughs> well, it's three down and seven to go. Sorry that your visit was so brief, but it was awfully nice to have you with us. <laughs> now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, my friends on the panel would know our guest on site, and we have, as usual, supplied them with blindfolds. Are those blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Yes. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery celebrity, we dispense with uh, all the usual preliminary questioning. We get right down to the general questions, which we will begin with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you in the entertainment business? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> you sound so rugged. <laughs> do you do anything besides act? Or, I mean, aside from acting? Yes. Are you in sports? Yes. Is it a seasonal sport? Oh, yes. Uh, is it in season now? Yes. Uh, is it uh, considered very popular in America and Japan? <laughs> I think so. Is it baseball? Yes. Well, I know so few of you boys by voice, I'm going to pass to Steve. Steve, take it. Well, I know quite a few Japanese baseball players. <laughs> <laughs> I take it uh, you play in this country. <laughs> yes. Are you in the uh, National League? Yes. Do you play for one of the New York teams? Yes. Ooh, see if he's been in a rhubarb today. There's been no call for a conference, Miss Gilgallen. Um, I don't, somehow I don't think they could have gotten him there quickly, Dorothy, but I could be wrong. Oh, no, I'm only kidding. There's I'm been not... no call for general chatter or conferences, please. <laughs> I didn't hear you bleeding, so I'll assume you were. <laughs> you weren't. Uh, do you play for the Brooklyn Dodgers? <clears throat> for what, Mr. Allen? Don't get sore. <laughs> I said it for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Yes, I do. Uh, do you play um, around the area of the infield? Yes, I do. Do you play? Uh, are you by any chance one of the catchers? One of them. <laughs> <laughs> are you Roy Campanella? <laughs> Roy Campanella. <laughs> explain our strategy to Roy, because Roy said, well, what can you do? And actually, we had something in mind. We thought you might get onto sports when you heard that deep voice. And we thought you might get also onto a little game called tennis, the national championships of which being played at Forest Hills. Oh. But they hit on baseball right away. But this is a great day in Roy's life. I know all the baseball experts and aficionados know that uh, Roy hit his 38th home run, right? That's today, right. which beat a record. It beat Gabby Hartnett's 19 what? 30. 30. 1930. Cubs record, and then you also brought in two runs, which gives you the highest, no, you equal the RBI record, right. right? So he's had a very hot day, but he didn't have a hot time with the panel, and the panel gave him a rough time. <laughs> but Roy, it's awfully nice of you to have come to be our guest, and would you say hello to the yes, panel? Yes, I will. It's Glad to see you. Now let's see what we can do with another challenger. Would you please uh, sign in, sir? Fred? 
Houston. <laughs> Mr. Houston, before you meet the panel, we would like you to tell us where you're from. I'm from Warwick, New York. Warwick, New Warwick. York. Was that upstate New York? Ah, yeah. uh, fine. Well, now, if you would, go and meet Mr. Husing, Ms. Francis, Mr. Allen, and Mr. Allen. Oh, hey, Mr. Houston. Hello. Hello, Mr. Houston. All right, Mr. Houston, over here now, if you will, sit down next to me, and uh, we'll see what the panel can do with their free guesses, which we'll begin with Miss Kilgallen. Uh, I think he has something to do with shoes. With shoes. Mr. Allen. I think he either works for the Warwick and Houston or for the Houston and Warwick. <laughs> Miss Francis. Thanks. <laughs> I think he's a plasterer. Mr. Husing. I think he's a band leader because he has my name almost. <laughs> no, Brady isn't. So sorry. Nobody got it right. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Houston. At the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. But the panel's got a date. I love that. Thank you. All right, Mr. Houston, the rules. No answer. Five dollars. Ten cards flipped. Fifty dollars. You've won the game. All set. Mr. Houston is self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with the name that sounds so much like Mr. Husing's, Mr. Husing. Thank you. Mr. Houston, is there a product involved in your uh, occupation? Yes. Mm-hmm. Is it uh, a product you can find around the house? Yes, it could. Did you find it outside the house as well? Could be. Could be. Is it a very large product? Give us a comparison. In a sense, uh, well, is it a house? <laughs> is it a house? No. Ask one down and nine to go, <laughs> Miss Gilgallop. Is it smaller than a house? Yes. It's small enough to put inside a house easily. Uh, is it small enough to put inside of a house easily? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Well, would it be uh, not unusual to find this product in a house? I would say that there are many circumstances under which it would certainly not be considered unusual to find this product within or in the immediate environs of the house. <laughs> If you had this thing, would it be regarded as something other than a necessity of life? Mm. Mm, it could be, and also it might, on the other hand, uh, be considered a necessity. It would depend on the application of it. Uh, would um, this be equally appropriate for a man or a woman to buy? Yes, we wouldn't care. Yeah. Or to use? Mm-hmm. Uh, would children also take some interest in this? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Is this by any chance anything alive? <coughs> yes. Mm -hmm. uh, well, then, if it, if it could be in the house without attracting undue attention, uh, would it be a pet? Uh, yes, yes. yes. Would it be a four-footed type pet? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Would it be a dog? A dog? Yes. I was two down and eight to go. <laughs> Mr. Allen. Is it non-carnivorous? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who said that? Uh, uh, of course, if you're going to do this, I'll pull that old bromide. You must have been eating alphabet soup tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is non-carnivorous. I see. Uh, is it vegetarian? Not necessarily. Vegetarian. So sorry. Four-footed vegetarian. <laughs> Who do we know? <laughs> then it's sir. Oh, please. Yeah, it's basically vegetarian. You've got about less than a minute to go. Is it a farm sort of animal? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, in the house? In the house? <laughs> <laughs> you know where they have large farms. Uh, <laughs> would you ever have it in the parlor? There are circumstances under which it would be found in the parlor, but not in, not in Mr. Houston's house. Is there any relation to the goat? <laughs> to the goat? Good heavenly days. Three days, three down and seven to go, and I'm afraid the time has gone by, so by default we will give it to Mr. Houston on an elapse of time, and you'd have been at it very soon, because actually Mr. Houston is a rabbit breeder, you know? <laughs> and little children like rabbits for pets, and they have them in the house. And so, Mr. Houston, you get the full prize by default on time, and our thanks for being our guest in What's My Life. <laughs> and in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we'll give you a preview look at one of our guests whose line our panel will be asked to try and identify on next week's program. Until we see you again, this is John Daly saying, good night, Miss Dorothy. <laughs> good night, Harvey.
Okay, what? <laughs> good night, Dorothy. Good night, boys. And good night, Arlene. Thank you. Good night, boys. <laughs> nice to have had you here, Ted. Good night. Oh, it's a great pleasure. Good night, John. And good night, ladies and gentlemen. And thanks for being with us on What's My Life. <laughs> 12 years I've been driving this bus. Never an empty seat. Suddenly, I got nobody. What'd I do? Where'd all my ladies go? They're at home playing Bingo America with Patrick Duffy. Print your card and play Bingo America tomorrow at 7 on GSN.